go. All yours. Thank you. Okay, so uh, welcome to the Jones Library Buildings and Facilities meeting for October 4th. This meeting is being recorded. I'm going to I, make sure that everyone can see and hear and be heard. Um, so please say that you are here, uh, Farah. Here. George. Here. And Alex Fave, I'm here. And Sharon, are you here as well? I am here. <laughs> Great. So seeing a quorum, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 4.02. Um, hold on a second. Since I'm simultaneously running the meeting and taking notes. Um, so let's see. Um, oh, wait, I have to read one more thing, don't I? Sorry about that. Um, so um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to the Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meeting calendar on the town of Amherst website uh, or by dialing in by phone. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Jones Library website. So. With that, um, first order we have is the meeting minutes of August 23rd. Somebody would like to make a motion? I must move for Second. Excellent. Any discussion of the minutes? Yep. Yes, yes, my editor in chief, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I just noticed one small thing. Yeah. Under 4B4. Their T H E I R should be T H E R E. Wrong there. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's fine. It just shows that I had a little time to read today. Exactly. That's all that shows. All right. Thank you. No problem. Anything else? Okay. So uh, the minutes as uh, amended by Farah with the proper there. <laughs> How do you vote, Farah? Yes. Um, yes. George. Yes. And Alex is a yes. Great. Um, second item on our agenda is public comment. And I do note that we have two attendees. Um, if either of them would like to make a public comment, we would happily bring you into the room and hear your public comment. Um, I know the person that's on the phone. I don't, I think raising your hand is star. Nine, maybe. I, was, I called into a meeting once on the phone. I had no idea how to raise my hand. I think it's star nine, but um, it could be wrong. Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the delivery van update. So I'll turn that over to you, I assume, George? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I don't think I have any meaningful updates. Uh, I forget where we left it off as far as BNF goes, but uh, the funding obviously was approved through JCPC. Uh, all of the relevant information that the dealership needed from the town has been provided. And now we are just waiting for a delivery date. Um, we were told about three to six months, which is not surprising given the supply chain uh, issues and all of that, plus it'll be a 2023 vehicle. so. Uh, they didn't even start producing them until midsummer. Uh, so, so yeah, we're just right now. We're just playing the waiting game, waiting for a delivery date confirmation. And I'm excited. I just wanted to add. So, the amount of money that JCPC had approved was less than the total cost. And so, because we uh, did not expend all of our town appropriation funds from last fiscal year. Uh, there was a little bit of money left over. Sonia was able to take some of that money and magically poof it into, into this account line. So we were able to fund this, which is awesome because it's not, um, that didn't happen for, you know, there are several other departments that are looking to purchase vehicles and the cost escalation is crazy. So we're one of the lucky ones. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's good. I mean, as far as probably remembers, JCPC actually tried to set aside some money with the expectation that as these vehicles were purchased, they were likely to escalate. So it's nice that we didn't have to tap into that pool. So that's great. Good. All right. Any questions on the Silvery van? No? 
Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the North Amherst Library building project update. So I'll, I'll let George talk afterwards as far as staffing goes. Um, uh, we, we, were, we were fully staffed for about three days and then um, our most recent hire had to give us her notice. So uh, we're actually in the process of hiring somebody new. So, um, so we'll be short staffed, but not for very long. And, um, but other than that, it's a great space. Um, we are seeing about 20 people a day, I think is what it's looking like. And that's, uh, we don't have patron counters there. So the librarians are actually doing check marks kind of a thing. Um, and, and the mill district has been very active with us, you know, looking to do uh, programs with us. That's, that's my update from uh, the, the staffing point of view. I didn't know if George had things to talk about regarding the actual space. Sharon, um, how does, I, oh, I'm sorry, George, for, no, so, no, no, so go 20, ahead, go ahead. that's okay. Um, the, that's a lot lower than we see in the North Amherst building 20 per day, or is that about typical what we would, it's so hard to say with pandemic, but I mean, how does that number compare? Uh, Hard to say, uh, okay. and I, I I would also argue it's not quite apples to apples yet because people are still finding out about us and where we are there. Um, so we'll keep we'll keep monitoring, and we're reporting okay. those statistics to the uh, to the mill district. They're they're interested in setting goals. So uh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, anyways, yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can I can. Just add a couple of things. Um, there was there was a big part of the collection that we were not able to put on display, and that has been brought back to the Jones, and they are going through it to determine uh, what can or should be weeded and what should be saved. Uh, so they're in the process of doing that as well. They don't have to do it on site. Uh, we're doing it at the Jones, and we're using the Goodwin room because we are not meeting in person. So it's a great use for that room at the moment. Um, as far as the original North Branch building, uh, Guilford has been very good about keeping us posted on the progress. And anytime I get any uh, images or information that I might think is historically uh, useful, I've been sending them up to special collections. Like for instance, just the other day, I got uh, a notification that the chimney is out and that the staircase going down to the basement, that horrible staircase is gone. And they've been providing photos and stuff. So that's kind of been neat. They've been very, um, they've been keeping a good line of communication open with us about the progress. And are, are things on schedule as it were, do we know? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Okay. Barry, you have any questions? Great, okay. Um, so monthly building and grounds report. I'm going to give that to you, George. <laughs> uh, Although I would like to note the heat is on. Woohoo! <laughs> I, was, I was going to ask because I know that that was scheduled to happen today. So I'm glad that everybody is feeling, hopefully everybody is feeling warmth. But when I check my email, I'll find out if anybody isn't. Um, so yeah, we've changed over to heating from air conditioning, which is, uh, I always breathe a sigh of relief because the air conditioning system is always the most troublesome of our aging mechanicals. So uh, I'm happy to finish off another summer without any other major breakdowns. Uh, as far as the building itself goes, you know, we've We've had some really bad rainstorms and it's just showing that, you know, there's more leaks in the roof in different places. And um, it's just really, really showing how desperately some of these repairs need to be made. And um, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, as far as grounds go, um, we've just been doing our best to keep up with the watering of the plantings that are supposed to get transplanted uh, through the Kestrel Trust. Um, I know that there may be a delay as to that happening. It was originally planned to happen in the fall. It may be happening in the spring now. Uh, so we're 
gearing up to make sure that we take care of those plantings as best we can until they can transplant them. Um, I don't think I have anything else building and grounds related for the moment. So, George, I feel badly because you're in your car, so I have no idea what you have in front of you. I feel like there was some roof replacement that was going to be done, and we had a contractor who gave us a quote, and then they wound up backing out, and then we were having difficulty getting anyone to do the kind of work we needed. Is that still? That was, uh, we, we had, I had looked for an emergency repair because there was water leaking into special collections at the joint of the old and new building. Uh, that work did finally happen. Okay. Uh, it, it took, it took, it was, it was mostly uh, the, the, the contractor on their end. They, they dropped the ball and they uh, kind of forgot about us, even though I'm good at pushing buttons, they, they, they had forgotten about us, but that work did get completed. Uh, and so far it has proven that their emergency repair has kept special collections watertight in that area. So, so that was all taken care of. Okay. So are there, I know that we have other leak issues. Are there roof issues that, that are leaking other than the atrium, which we know we can't do a whole lot about? Are there other yeah. areas? Yeah, there's, there's a section of the original roof on the, the, the slate roof where um, if you can envision it, there's that narrow spiral staircase that goes up to the staff lounge area. And there's, there's a fairly chronic leak there uh, to the point where some of the ceiling fell down like a, a, a one foot by one foot piece uh, came down. Uh, so if we have heavy rains, we have to put a bucket there and I'm keeping an eye on the roof. I went up there with a ladder. Um, sorry, not the roof, the ceiling, uh, just to make sure that there was no other imminent threat of any more ceiling falling down. Cause I don't want a staff person to get injured. Uh, but it, the rest of what is up there seems fairly stable right now, but that's somewhere where it has had leaked over time. Uh, it would a minor leak, but it's been getting worse and worse over time. And now it's to the point where if we were to go another year or so, I would want to have somebody go up there and check it out. It's a part of the roof that I can't access. So it would have to be a roofer to come in with probably a drone or a crane to take a look at it. Okay. So, um, sorry, Farah, do you have any questions? I have more, but I don't want to like hog all the air. So. No, um, no, I just, so does that mean that next, at least, I mean, nothing's going to happen at least for the next two years, right? So that means we really need, so what is it going to be like a band-aid fix for the next two years or? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, like it's throwing money away. It's it's going to have to be. Um you know, the, the problem with a slate roof is that, you know, every every time you touch it, you risk damaging, especially a, a roof as old as this one. Uh, so, yeah, it'll just have to be banded repairs until that, that happens. I, I, I feel like, too, um, when we got the existing conditions report, however long ago, that there were issues in the 1920 building where the 1990 and 1920 joined where it's actually damaging the 1920s building is that atrium related or is that roof related it's it's both it's both uh you know the the space around the atrium itself is is rubber membrane and where it all attaches to the brick on the 1920s structure uh because right now you have the, 90, the 90s edition on two sides and you have the 1920s original building on the other two sides. And it's those two sides where, uh, it, particularly in the winter, it, once you have snow build up, it goes above where the rubber membrane is. And when you have freezing and thawing, the water just comes in. Uh, we've had it patched multiple times over the years, but water still finds its way in. So uh, I guess, I mean, on the one hand, you know, ideally, <laughs> I guess 
it it sounds like and I don't want to make assumptions like you know we we can't really fully deal with this unless we're essentially re-roofing and dealing the atrium otherwise yeah. like, it's hard to be proactive because being proactive being proactive is replacing not like there's not like is there a middle ground like is there 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 really there really isn't you know over the last 15 years uh you know going back being prior to my time you know the rubber membrane roof has been replaced and redesigned at least once uh the glass panels in the atrium have been recocked at least once or twice um there's been several roofing patch job replacements uh some of them ten thousand dollars some twenty thousand dollars some even more a lot of it's been done through JCPC and using historic preservation funds. Uh, but they've all pretty much just been band-aids this whole time. And, you know, really, unless we start looking at replacing the roof or redesigning the atrium, uh, you're, you're just throwing money away. So do we need to, in this year's JCPC budget, ask for money around patching or is that or is it something we'll just take out of our maintenance budget like how do we for 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 some of the emer for some of the like pointed areas like for instance this area that i just described by the staff lounge area that is something that will probably be able to be absorbed into the maintenance budget but if we start looking at any kind of um larger repairs it's going to have to be out of capital and you know as as i think it's on the agenda you know just talking about hvac repairs that has to be our number one and roofing even though roofing is a critical issue as well it, it, it can't be the number one on the list so and so the last time we asked the town for emergency you know, repair money, they said, um, we don't want to give you a chunk of money. Instead, just let us know, you know, when the roof starts to cave in and, and we'll, we'll solve the problem then. So um, yeah, it's something to talk about if you want to submit another request or should I just ask Paul? Far you had a hand up to you. Yeah, yeah. So do we know what would be the cheapest solution for the next few years? I mean, I we don't even know when we would start breaking ground or anything, right? So what are we supposed to do for now? I mean, in my opinion, it's 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 just localized repairs as as we need them. Um because anything bigger than that is going to, we would have to involve hire, we would have to involve hiring an architect. If we're going to do any kind of, any kind of blanket roof repairs, we get, we get into a bigger capital project. So, so George, if we're, do, if we were just to replace the whole roof, we, we need to hire an architect for that. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, because, I'm, because, I'm, because I'm a dumb owner, homeowner. I know nothing about. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, because because of the we then it triggers into like the the town and state guidelines where over a certain threshold we need to hire an architect, do contracting, do bids, and things like that. And any any kind of partial roof repair will 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 trigger that. Uh, and obviously, an entire roof repair. You're talking into the into the million so yeah you would definitely need to hire an architect so I, I guess from my perspective i mean i feel like in the time that i've been on the board you know i mean we've been sort of having these conversations um you know as do the schools right i mean jcpc is the like you know how do we and um so i think it makes sense for us to keep having conversations with the finance director and the town manager. And when it comes to JCPC, just letting them know, you know, that we have, it sounds like two problem spots, George, that we know are, are likely to need repairs and that we think we can cover one, but, you know, and, but also just the larger conversation with them. Like, do they, we, we know that certain spots may be impacting the 19, 20s building, right? 
and and causing issues there. So does town want to just replace the whole roof and deal with it now, or do they want? So I guess because we're not just spending our money, we're spending town funds. I think it would be good to have a conversation with town to see, you know, we're thinking these make sense, but do you think differently? Um, and right. it sounds like the last time you talked to them, they they were sort of thinking the same thing as George, but I think it's good to just keep sort of checking in, especially as the project goes further and further out and we're going longer and longer. You know, so we're in a minute, we'll be talking about the, the backup building project planning and um, it, it, one of the pieces of this puzzle is is involving Jeremiah and Rob and um, and so that should be, a, we can talk about, hey, do you want us to apply for JCPC? That kind of a thing. Okay. So but, maybe, I can, maybe, but I will also talk I with Paul. Say, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, that's, maybe that's a good segue unless people have more, because uh, we, we're, we're sort of, the monthly building report sort of naturally <laughs> bleeds into. <laughs> so um, do we want to switch over into the next? Does that make sense? Okay. So um, we had talked about at our last meeting, um, reviewing the prioritization. So back in like it was 2017, George put together sort of what were our priorities for safely uh, keeping the library open. And it was by no means everything that needs doing in the library. It was just what are the things for safety um, and, and, you know, major maintenance issues. And, you know, HVAC was actually number four on the list. It wasn't number one. I think the fire systems was number one. And so we talked about it at our last meeting. Um, you know, we need to be thinking about if the project doesn't move forward and or spanning this, you know, two years or whatever it is until we actually start breaking ground and, and dealing with this project and, you know, communicating with JCPC about requests and what our priorities now. Um, and so, I don't know, George, if you had a chance to do that, but I think um, what also might make sense is to sort of expand that conversation a little bit um, to think about infrastructure priorities in the sense of library services and town priorities, if that makes sense. So let's say, so I, I feel like we have sort of multiple things. One is getting, you know, getting to where the project is um, and then the other is, should the project need to go before town council again? And for whatever reason, they don't vote in favor of it. Um, you know, then we've got, we've, we, we still have a building to deal with. And, and I don't know what that looks like yet. And we haven't voted, but some of the things that, you know, have come up through this process is from an infrastructure standpoint, um, you know, for example, um, uh, you know, we talk to, you know, we have a sustainability committee that's got an engineer and like we have all these people who this is what they do. And so the town has talked about their priority of green buildings, right? We have a net zero bylaw and part of what was one of the many things about this uh, project is that it would create a net zero ready building. Um, and we know that we can't, it's not like your house. We can't rip out the old boilers and slap up some, you know, mini splits and voila, we're running on electricity. So, you know, we know there's no sort of plug and play option. Um, and we also know from our sustainability committee that, you know, we've done all of the energy efficiency things that we can sort of do in a costly way. So, part like there's two parts one is getting off fossil fuels and the other part is an energy efficient building because if you know you can replace all your systems with electric get off fossil fuels but then if you're it takes you know five times as much to run the building because it's an inefficient building then you know that's really not great and that's kind of where we would be from my understanding not being an engineer and not being a sustainability expert but that's my understanding and so, you know, what, what is option B? It's not just simply replacing our HVAC system. And if the town has said their priority is green, what does that look like? And then, you know, like from a technology standpoint, right? We know from our former head of IT that, you know, the 1990s edition, I don't even think about this, but the 1990s edition was built pre-internet, right? 
Um, and so there's no flexibility in either the 1928 or the 1990 building to accommodate technology needs. So we know that our building is out of capacity right now for data ports and phones. We're using previous generation wiring. It's not to code. And so our main conduit for wiring is near at capacity. And so once we are fully there, you know, we lose our inability to make updates, um, which in a library where you get free internet and access to computers is pretty darn important for many members of our community. Um, and so, you know, right now, anytime we make any changes, we're actually spending twice as much money because contractors have to drill through concrete floors because we don't have proper routing of wires and things. Um, so, and then a third issue that comes to mind is like safety issues, right? Like, you know, if we stay in this building, we still have, uh, one of the things we heard a lot from community members in the outreach is from teens, from children and from parents about, you know, being concerned about safety issues, whether it's, you know, going down into the stacks or, you know, sight lines or all the staircases. And so, if we're in this building, what does that look like? Is it like, is the only way to get those things to basically gut the building, take it down to studs, which then you can do whatever you need, or is there a middle ground? And so I, I guess I kind of would like to look at our prioritization of building needs like you did, but then I also wanna be thinking, are there questions that we wanna be going out to, whether it's Coon Riddle or somebody else to sort of ask, to get a sense for, I mean, I know we could gut the building and I think, I don't know, I think we could gut the building and then do all those things, but I don't know. Um, I also don't know whether that's gonna cost more than the project. So I'm just trying to figure out like, we can't ignore, there are certain things we can't ignore, like we have to deal with. And that's not even getting into like addressing community needs, right? Like we're not even talking about teen spaces and space planning. We're just talking about like, like things that must happen for us to be able to like provide services. So I, I guess, I don't know, George, if you, have a start to your prioritization, but I, I guess I just want to sort of get the ball rolling and people thinking, and then maybe next meeting or in a couple of meetings, we can start doing that. And then Sharon, you said that Rob Mora and yeah. Jeremiah Plant. Uh, so so in, in discussing this bridge memorandum uh, of agreement with the town manager and the finance director, one of the things that is going into this bridge agreement that, um, that we'll be signing is that if the project doesn't move forward, this 1.8 million um, that, that will go back to the town, it will go back by way of replacing our HVAC system. And so their, their space planning and, and everything that you just talked about there, Alex, that's off the table for the first 1.8 million um, and beyond, what, whatever it costs to take it out and, and reinstall something new, um, that's gonna be the, the requirement. And we have three years to do that. Um, uh, so, as part of that process, uh, uh, the town is insisting on uh, on working with Jeremiah Plant, who is the town's George. He's the facilities director for the town of Amherst, um, and Rob Morrow, who's the building inspector. They both have uh, experience with with buildings and building projects. So, um, you know, so we're happy to we should bring them on in and give them tours and, you know, work with them on, on what the, what a possible solution is, is for all of this. Great. Yeah. More, the more, the more, the merrier. More the merrier. George, you can focus on other things. Yeah, I know. I think that's fabulous. I mean, I, you know, I, I think, I mean, I've worked with, uh, with Rob, no, Jeremiah at JCPC. I mean, he presents to us. He's, I think he's an engineer, he's a very knowledgeable guy, you know, more people at the table, that's fabulous. Um, so I guess with that in mind, are hey, you, George? What is that noise? <laughs> What's that? Is that noise? There's like a clackety clackety sound. It's, it's probably, probably, it's probably me. Because you're driving, yeah. I'm being transported, so it's probably me. So, so I'm wondering too, to that end, I mean, to the extent that we're gonna have Two more people at the table who are familiar with you know buildings and how things work um you know i think that's great so you know maybe we can talk about how we want to take advantage of 
their expertise. Um, you know, one of the things that I keep struggling with is, you know, we know the HVAC system runs around the atrium. So dealing, we've been told on multiple occasions that dealing with the HVAC and the atrium not in tandem is gonna be a lot more expensive and doesn't entirely make sense. So if they have ideas. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we have, uh, George did reach out to Kuhn Riddle, just, you know, quick question. Hey, can we just do the HVAC system without uh, uh, triggering all these other things? And they said, yes. Uh, yeah. But you just hit the nail on the head when you said, is it gonna cost more? Absolutely. It, you know, if 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 the backup plan has to happen, the town's going to spend way more money. Yeah, which all the more reason. I mean, I love having Rob and Jer Jeremiah at the table because they're the ones, you know, thinking about all of the town's buildings. Right. And so I think they're good people to have at the table to sort of help us think about the town funds in yeah. general, right? Like if it makes more sense for the town to spend more money over a longer period, I'd rather them be the ones saying that, not us. I'm not yeah. going to dictate how town should spend money. So, um, okay. Um, yeah, Farah. So um, is, is this something like, can we get them involved sooner? Like, you know, by our next meeting. So then maybe even have them come to our meeting. I'll ask them. Yeah. yeah. If anything, just start to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, we have, as you guys know, we have boatloads of documentations and studies that have happened. Um, my guess is they don't have a lot of time to read all of this, but if we could just initiate the process and, and that, you know, have them come to a meeting and have George give them a tour, you know, a real tour of, of the systems um, so they can start to speak knowledgeably about it. And, you know, it's going to take more than one tour. Um, but yeah, we should start that process. Yeah. So maybe if we can get them the existing conditions report, you know, Western Builders, I mean, you know, I think Western Builders just did their quotes off of the existing conditions report. They didn't do an actual site visit. Um, and then Kuhn Riddle did theirs off Western Builders, which is off. But I mean, I think the more information we can get them, um, I doubt they're going to read all, you know, 150 pages <laughs> before yeah. our meeting. But yeah. Sorry, you had something? Yeah. And, and also just, I think, um, based on our meeting yesterday, uh, the trustee meeting where we were talking about Plan B, but just for us to get a sense, and that's why I keep going back to the Band-Aid fixes, just... For us to know how much the Band-Aid fixes are going to cost us for the next two years. And then on top of that, if we have to go to plan B, how much that's going to cost us. And that would be undoing the Band-Aid fixes, I'm presuming, if <laughs> the project doesn't go forward. So I can let George talk more about this. The problem is getting actual costs is going to cost us money. Right. So, uh, you know, I would prefer to just do everything that we can with the knowledge that we have now, you know, and asking Kuhn Riddle, you know, and, and a, a, a little question off to the side, Hey, by the way, what do you think about this? Um, but the thought of spending another, you know, how much have we spent the sustainability report itself cost over $50,000. We, we spent 80 grand. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing, right? I mean, the, the reality is like, we, we know, I mean, we have an existing conditions report we have the the cost of fixing the key things and you know we have you know minimum accessibility requirements so i mean i think we have a sense of cost the cost we don't have a sense of is actually because none of those things take into consideration the things that i talked about earlier which is dealing with our technology needs dealing with safety concerns per se and and dealing with um uh what was the other thing i said uh so, oh, and yeah, green. Oh, sustainability yeah sustainability yeah. so and, i mean you know the thing is and i, I want to highlight this so the memorandum of understanding that we're being asked to sign the town is flat out saying space planning is off the table you know for this first three years yeah, well, I'm not even thinking from that. I'm I'm thinking from I mean the reality is we like we've done that. 
again, you know, like we've, right. I mean, we, we, we did do space planning. We did do, you know, community engagement. We have a building program. So, I mean, we know what the community needs are and we know that we can't meet community needs in the current space. And we also know that, you know, we were given suggestions um, about how to make better use of our space, right? So starting 11 years ago, right? The staff started documenting issues, right? And and took the recommendations and part of that was weeding the collection, right? And, you know, um, you know, I, at one of our, our library chats, right? I mean, our head of children's basically said they're nearing the end of their innovation, right? You know, they 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 continually shift things around to come up with better spaces. You know, young adults had young adult in different spaces. You know, they lost half their collection due to leaks when they had it in the basement. And, you know, special collections have tried different spaces and variations, but they can't turn the exhibit room into a reading room because it would take massive technology, which we know is a problem, to hook up the computers. So, I mean, like to me, like short of hiring an architect, yeah. there's like, like we know what we need. We know what the issues are. We know we've done the maximum that we can do without hiring an architect to try to redesign the spaces. So, so to the point, like I, I'm not sure what additional information we can get unless we're willing to go spend another, yeah. you know, 10, 20, 30, $40,000, which again, if the town wants us to spend that, I'm happy to do it um, with them paying for it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. Not us, you yeah. know, um, because we've already we've already spent eighty thousand dollars trying to, and all of that was done at the request of the town asking us to do this so that they had the information they need for decision making purposes. So, you know, I, I feel like we've in good faith done a lot of that. Um, yeah, go ahead, Farah. But I just feel like like we're. We're supposed to be working on two plans, it almost feels like. It has to be the short-term plan for the next two years. And then if this doesn't go through, then we have to work on plan B. Right. Which means the short-term plan is a waste of money, right? Well, I mean, that's why we've been doing things dealing with things as they come up so that we're not throwing mm. money away when we're going to replace things eventually. Um, so, okay. So, um, George, do you, I, you're still working on your reprioritization or now that we're talking about including Rob and Jeremiah, do we sort of hold off on that? And maybe as you, like, maybe you guys discuss it together. I don't know how you want to proceed with that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to come down to how they want to proceed with it. You know, I, I, I would add that, you know, when we first, the Western Builders list was first compiled back in 2017, that was five years ago. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the priorities have changed. You know, the HVAC system was out of date five years ago. Now it's got five more years on it. Uh, and that has proven to be uh, where most of our un, un, you know, unplanned repairs have happened. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's gonna it's gonna take, you know, if Rob and Jeremiah are gonna become involved in it, I think it's gonna take a conversation with them um, that they're they're going to have to become educated as to what the existing conditions in the building are really like and where the priorities should be with it and, and how complex it's gonna be. Um, the only other thing I would also add is it's important to remember that that plan B list didn't take into, a, into, into account uh, any kind of sustainability measures or any kind of programming at, uh, measures. This is strictly just replacing worn out equipment and you know, things like repainting the building and replacing the carpet. It, it has absolutely nothing to do with advancing the, uh, advancing the efficiency of the building. Yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering, um, you know, 
Um, are there other resources in town? Like, does it make sense to reach out to Stephanie Chicorello or ECAC or someone about, you know, as we develop this other plan, um, you know, every replacement that's happening right now, whether it's in the police building or in its, right, those are all, and Rob's doing that actually, um, and Jeremiah, or, do, or Jeremiah, I think, is doing that. So, I mean, they're, and they, so maybe we don't, maybe those guys are not, but I know that from JCPC, like every time they're trying to replace out systems, they're trying to do things that are more efficient. Now, we've obviously got a building that's a little bit more unique in terms of having the 1920s piece, which really significantly impacts things as well as the separate HVAC system and special collections. Um, but I guess I may, maybe, and maybe we have the conversation with Rob and Jeremiah first, but I, I really, you know, I have a 22 year old son whose major is environmental studies who, you know, if any of you have kids of that age, you know, I mean, even I'm sure far, I mean, both of you, your kids, like, like, it's a thing, climate change, yeah. right? And yeah. it's not just about lowering our electricity bills. And it's not just about like, I, if we're going to be putting, you know, 15, 20 million dollars into a building, I have a really hard time from a ethical standpoint of not doing things that are going to be better for the planet in the end. And so if we need to loop in ECAC or our sustainability director or however, I just, I'd rather have them at the table sooner rather than later helping us in whatever the way we can. And do we do, open our sustainability committee at some point? I don't know. I mean, you know. Do you want me to invite Stephanie at the same time I invite Rob and uh, Jeremiah? Um, maybe reach out to Stephanie and find out if she thinks it makes sense for her to be there from the beginning or later. I don't know enough about what, um, I don't know where her role would come in, if at all. So if earlier is better than yeah, if later is better than yeah. I think we'll do. Even if she just came for the first meeting so she could hear all of this background, you know, maybe that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Okay. Anything else? Isn't that enough, Alex? It is. It is. <laughs> it, is. It, is. it is. It is. All right. Um, so You'll be of... thrilled to hear. We okay. just submitted. We were late coming on to this meeting. We just submitted our grant to the uh, National Endowment for Humanities in the amount of a million dollars. Um, holy cow. It was, that was a lot awesome. of work. So many thanks to uh, Ginny Hamilton and Claudia canali Parola. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Good. All right. Um, so do we have a next meeting? I have no topics not anticipated by me this time. <laughs> um, do we have a next meeting uh, scheduled on calendar? Is it uh, Tuesday, November 15th at 9 a.m.? You want to reschedule that? Tuesday, November 15th at 9 a.m. Um, yeah, Far, how do you feel about Are you okay with me sticking with an afternoon again? Um, sure, but if it's on a Tuesday, like 4.15, 4.30 works better for me. I was able okay. to juggle stuff today. George, is that, is that too late? Um, no, I, I can make that work. Work. I can make that work. Okay. So November fifteenth, okay. four fifteen. If that works, I mean, I, I know it's a weird number. Okay. Just a question of a drop off and getting somewhere to to a to a device. Yeah, and there, yeah, and that I don't know. I'm I'm still figuring things out. There might be a possibility to start moving it back to an earlier time. I'll I'll know more. Um. So I just wanted, we, we had a lot of conversations. So I, I know we did public comment already, but I just wanted to, in case we have three people um, in our attendees, if there's anybody who wanted to give a public comment, just wanted to give the opportunity to hop in, raise your hand, and if there's anything you wanna say, or... All right, seeing nobody. <laughs> um, George, thank you. Sharon, thank you. Thank Obviously, you. Farah, thank you. I appreciate, thank I know you. that. <laughs> you guys are living building 24 7 so thank you um and i look forward to um next month's agenda and maybe we need to be a little bit flexible too on the date if that doesn't work for rob and so we'll hold that as a tentative date once you reach out to folks 
Sounds good. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Bye. Bye-bye.